3D printing is able to mass produce all types of different sorts of products, but it is a different type of process, which means that you have to design for it because it's not the same as molding, machining, or any other type of process. What you have to do is consider how 3D printing works and then create the product that you want to make. And if you do that, it allows you to create something completely unique and differentiated from what has ever been made before. So let's go ahead and take a look at this tape dispenser. So a tape dispenser is a really mundane type of item. It's very low cost, it's very common, everybody has to interact with it and everybody understands what it is. If you look at a standard type of tape dispenser, you have to have something sharp on the front to cut the tape and then you want some sort of weight so it actually sits on the table and is reliable. But so many tape dispensers made today are just gross. They're black, terrible, U-shaped, nasty things that don't make your life that much better when you're sitting inside of your cubicle. But what if you could add some color, some texture, and some vibrance to something so mundane? 3D printing lets you do this by creating a number of features that are really interesting. So when we were designing this, the first thing we started with was a standard brick. And once you had the brick, you're like, okay, cool, that's fine. You could actually turn that into a tape dispenser and it would work fine. But we want that sharp edge on the front. So in order to get to that, what we did was we angled the tape dispenser. This way you end up with the sharp edge at the front that you're then able to cut the teeth out of. Also from a CAD perspective, this makes the operation really simple because those serrated teeth are able to just be a straight extrusion without some kind of wonky angle, but they end up fading off of the edge and looking really cool. The angle itself also helps to give it a little bit of proportion and also from an industrial design perspective sh helps show you the point of action. It leads your eye to the point so that you know, oh, that's where the tape actually is. The overall shape follows standard 3D printing practices where we used chamfers in a lot of places, especially for the outer edges because they just look good and they eliminate any sort of like elephant's foot and that kind of thing when mass producing these because you always want to eliminate any sort of options for failure inside of a 3D print as often as you possibly can. 3D printing also let us do this all as one single unit. There's no assembly at all. We're able to print this brick all at once and it's completely finished. Whereas traditional tape dispensers are generally produced by two halves stuck together with some sand in between and then you screw on the metal blade on the front. But this is all done at once. What we did was we actually print it upside down like this on the print bed. Using a glass print bed, it allows us to make those teeth very sharp so that you can actually cut the tape on them and we're able to have the channels inside of there be printed because even though it's kind of a difficult, if not impossible geometry to make any other way, you can actually embed them in there and it prints fully complete. We also used a higher infill, so this part is naturally heavy just from the nature of the plastic itself. What you can do though, if you're really optimizing for cost, you can make it lighter and fill it later on, but this makes a really premium feel part because this weighs about a quarter of a pound or so, which is a nice bit of heft to feel really, really premium. The other thing we did was to the outer side, we used a bit of noise. We added some noise to it and added this texture, which is a very expensive type of feature to do with other manufacturing methods, and also just softens it up so it looks beautiful and you don't really see layer lines. And the last feature that's really special about that is just how thick it is. This type of part, this chunky, thick, heavy part cannot be made unless you're carving it out of a block of wood, which means that you're now wasting a ton of material, whereas with 3D printing, you're able to make a thick, chunky, heavy part without waste and without having to worry about things like shrinkage, which make this type of a piece impossible to mold because the sides would warp and shrink in if you were trying to shoot that much plastic into a place. Now the housing is all fine and interesting, but one of the most fascinating parts of the design of this is actually the roller itself. Round parts don't like to be printed. And in this case, the round part had to be printed horizontal so that the spokes were actually strong and reliable and you didn't have to worry about layers breaking. So what we did was we modeled up this hub the way we wanted it to, and you have the two spokes and everything. You go ahead and fill it at all so that it's as rounded as possible on all of the sharp edges. But then the clever little thing that we did was we actually cropped off one side, giving it a single flat edge. Now that's pretty simple. Um, and doesn't have any effect on the function of it because again, it's going to go into another circle and having a single cropped edge doesn't really affect any part of it at all there. But this does make it very printable because now it has a nice surface to print on. But now you have the issue of these actual overhangs over here and we can't fill it or chamfer those. We can't do anything terribly clever with it because those need to be able to sit deep into the grooves of the main body. But what we did with this was a little bit interesting that people don't often do. We actually designed the supports into this. The way you make a designed support like this is you make a little pointed tower and that pointed tower has an interface point of half a millimeter, just half a millimeter. 
That means that when you print this, you have towers exactly where you need them. There's no excess material. You don't have to worry about tweaking settings or anything like that. It is perfect every time. And when they're finished, they just snap right off and there's nothing to have to worry about. It's very easy to process. This part, when it came off the machine, if we were making 10 or 100,000 of these, you'd basically just throw these all into a tumbler and the supports would fall off. So it's a very efficient way to make support for a very trivial little feature so that this part basically comes off a machine fully complete and ready to go into a box, which means that you can now make it very, very affordably because anywhere you can eliminate human labor in the production of a product, you want to. So. The tape dispenser was actually a more complex and subtle type of part than many people would really realize because when you're designing for 3D printing, there's a number of different rules to follow and a number of different tricks that allow you to create something truly unique and different from what exists anywhere else out there, but still affordable, reliable, and mass producible. Have a great day, everybody.